Times Square, the crossroads of the world. Every year it welcomes over 130 million visitors with its dazzling displays, quirky entertainers and flashing billboards. But deep inside all those bright lights, right at the heart of Times Square, stands a building that's been mostly empty for decades. What's the story behind this oddly vacant skyscraper in one of the busiest places on Earth? This is One Times Square, and this is why it sits empty in the middle of the city that never sleeps. Our story begins over 100 years ago, at the turn of the 20th century. Back then, this area wasn't yet known as Times Square, it was called Long Acre Square, named after London's famous carriage district. See, most of Manhattan is laid out in a tidy grid of perpendicular streets and avenues that form nice, easy to develop, rectangular plots of land. Everywhere, that is except, where Broadway cuts its long diagonal path across the island, creating funky, triangular blocks wherever it intersects the grid. Long Acre Square just so happened to sit on one of those awkward Broadway intersections, which made construction challenging and kept the area mostly undeveloped. Not many architects wanted to deal with building on a tight, wedge-shaped plot of land, but one visionary saw an opportunity in this quirky real estate. Adolf Ox, owner and publisher of the New York Times, deciding this emerging district would be the perfect place to build the newspaper's new headquarters. In 1904, the Times commissioned a 26-storey neo-gothic skyscraper to be built on this triangular block between 42nd and 47th streets. With its completion, Long Acre Square was officially renamed Times Square, and the building was christened One Times Square. Now, building a tower on a skinny triangle of land is no easy feat. Just ask the architects of the nearby Flatiron building. Like the Flatiron, One Times Square had to be cleverly designed to fit its odd footprint. Architects divided the building into three distinct sections, with the setback two-thirds of the way up. Inside, the floor plans were cramped and the layout was, well, weird. Turns out, architecture can be pretty funky when you're working with a slice of pizza shaped lot. Quirky layout aside, One Times Square quickly became an icon of the city. In 1907, the Times hosted the New Year's Eve celebration at the Tower, complete with midnight fireworks. When the city banned explosives the next year, the New York Times found another way to ring in 1908. They slowly lowered a giant glittering ball down the roof of One Times Square as the clock struck 12. And so, thanks to the slightly odd whims of one newspaper owner, the Times Square ball drop was born, a tradition that still draws over a million people to cram into Times Square every New Year's Eve. The Times occupied their shiny new headquarters for less than 10 years before moving to a bigger space just down the block in 1913. But one Times Square's legacy was just getting started and its story was about to take a turn for the empty. So why did this ornate, 26-storey neo-gothic tower transform from newspaper headquarters to vacant vertical real estate? After the break, we'll see how One Times Square went from architectural icon to mostly empty advertising behemoth. As the New York Times settled into its new headquarters down the block, One Times Square went through a series of owners and tenants over the next few decades. But as the 20th century marched on, the building began to lose its luster. Remember those cramped, funky floor plans? Turns out, they weren't exactly conducive to modern office layouts. As times changed and tenants' needs evolved, the oddly shaped interior spaces became increasingly unappealing. But something else was happening to one Times Square as the decades passed. Slowly but surely, it was being taken over by advertising. In the early 1900s, as Broadway's bright theatre lights began drawing crowds to the area, Times Square started to evolve into an advertising mecca. Billboards and electric signs covered every available surface, hawking everything from cigarettes to soap. In 1928, the New York Times installed a dazzling new feature on the side of One Times Square, the Motograph News Bulletin, or Zipper. This 380-foot-long electric news ticker used 14,800 light bulbs to flash the latest headlines to the masses gathered below. The Zipper was just the beginning. Over the years, more and more ads began to cover One Times Square's ornate neo-gothic facade. The building's exterior became a mosaic of neon and electric signs. Each one more eye-catching than the last, but as One Times Square's exterior got brighter and flashier, its interior grew darker and emptier. By the 1960s, the building's once grand facade had been completely stripped away, replaced with marble panels and concrete cladding to better support the mammoth billboards. Advertisers have realised something important. In Times Square, ad space on the outside of a building was far more valuable than office space on the inside. One Times Square's owner could make a killing just by leasing out the facade, with no need to bother with interior tenants. 
as the 20th century drew to a close, one Times Square's transformation into a hollow advertising shell was nearly complete. Piece by piece, the last remaining tenants moved out, until only the retail space on the ground floor was occupied. The rest of the building's 21 floors sat vacant, nothing more than structural support for the dazzling displays outside. That brings us to today. One Times Square, the iconic centerpiece of the crossroads of the world, is almost completely empty. The building's only tenants are the Walgreens on the ground floor and the New Year's Eve ball on the roof. In between sits over 110,000 square feet of vacant space, completely unused except for storage and structural support. The appearances can be deceiving. For a building with no tenants, One Times Square is wildly profitable. Those flashy digital billboards bring in over 23 million a year in advertising revenue. In fact, the billboards are so lucrative that the building's owners have zero incentive to fill the interior space. The ads are far more profitable per square foot than any traditional tenant could be. So there, One Times Square sits, a 26-storey, mostly hollow moneymaker in the heart of America's most famous intersection. But the story of One Times Square isn't over just yet. Coming up, we'll take a look at the building's surprising future and the plan to transform this empty icon into a new kind of tenantless cash cow. For decades, One Times Square has been little more than a skeleton, a vacant shell of a building whose only purpose was to support the glittering ads that covered its facade. But now, this empty icon is poised for a $500 million transformation that will redefine its role in the heart of Times Square. In 2022, the building's owners announced an ambitious plan to reinvent one Times Square as a vertical entertainment hub, a 21st century update on the classic observation deck. The redesign will carve out 12 floors of immersive exhibit space, filled with digital displays, virtual reality experiences, and interactive environments. Think of it as a Times Square themed tourist attraction inside the building that defines Times Square. The crown jewel of the redevelopment will be an observation deck on the 18th floor, offering sweeping views of Times Square and famous billboards. But unlike other observation decks around the city, this one will put visitors right in the middle of the action, eye level with the dazzling displays. To top it all off, a new museum on the lower floors will showcase the history of Times Square and one Times Square itself, from its days as the New York Times headquarters to its current role as an advertising icon. But transforming a 120 year old building that's been mostly empty for decades is no small feat especially in the heart of one of the busiest pedestrian areas in the world. Just getting materials to the site is a logistical nightmare. Times Square is constantly swarming with tourists, street performers and endless traffic. Construction crews have to coordinate deliveries in the dead of night, carefully shuttling equipment and supplies through the crowded streets. Then, there are the technical challenges of the renovation itself, adding new elevator shafts to the exterior of the building, carving out floor plates that were never designed for public use, all while working around the building's primary moneymaker, the billboards that must remain operational throughout the construction. It's a delicate dance of engineering, logistics and advertising contracts, all unfolding in the non-stop heart of the city that never sleeps. If it all goes according to plan, the new One Times Square will open its doors in 2024, welcoming visitors to experience Times Square in a whole new way. The reimagined building will offer a blend of history and modern entertainment, a chance to engage with the story of Times Square while taking in its famous sights and sounds. But more than that, the redevelopment represents a new model for what a skyscraper can be in the age of experimental commerce. One Times Square will be a building that generates revenue not from traditional tenants, but from visitors seeking out unique experiences. In a sense, the building's transformation is the ultimate extension of its decades-long evolution. What started as a newspaper headquarters became an empty vessel for advertising and will now become an immersive advertisement for itself. The story of One Times Square is a tale of architectural adaptation of a building that has continuously reinvented itself to survive in the ever-changing heart of New York City. From its days as the quirky neo-gothic home of the New York Times, to its decades as an empty billboard laden shell, to its future as an experimental entertainment destination. One Times Square has always found a way to be part of the action, so the next time you find yourself in Times Square, craning your neck to take in the dazzling displays, remember the surprising story of the building at its centre. The empty skyscraper that, in its own way, has always been at the heart of the crossroads of the world, 